Today on our 2012 Ford Transit Connect, we're going to be taking a look at the Takancha T1 Vehicle Wiring Harness, part number 118585. So here's what our wiring looks like when it's fully installed. It's going to have a four pole flat trailer end connector. It does come with a dust cover and it is going to stay on the outside of the vehicle at all times. So it's going to be ready whenever we need our wiring. To begin our installation, we're going to need to open up our rear doors so that we can gain access to remove the taillights. To remove our taillights, we have two plastic rotating clips. Now these may be pretty tight, so we'll just take a pair of slip joint pliers or anything to grab them. We can loosen them up and then remove them by hand the rest of the way. Now once those are removed, if we look inside of here, we're gonna have a 10 millimeter nut. So you're gonna need a 10 millimeter deep well socket and we can remove those bolts. With those bolts removed, we can come to the outside of our tail light. And we're just gonna grab our tail light and we're gonna pull straight back. So we're gonna unplug our vehicle's wiring harness from our tail light. And there's a tab right here. If you push on this tab, it'll release the tail light. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And we're gonna set these aside so they don't get damaged or lost. Next, I wanna bring your attention to our wiring harness. You might have noticed that there's some connectors between the wires, but not on the yellow end. Well, for now, we're gonna disconnect our red and green ends and we're gonna set the connectors aside and we're disconnecting our four pole end with the green, yellow, white, and brown wires. And we're gonna set these aside for installation later. If we come over to our driver's side, we're gonna be taking the yellow, brown, and white connector and we're gonna be plugging in the vehicle's end we want to make sure that locks in and we're going to move back to the inside now. Right above our hinge is going to be a plug. We're going to need to remove this plug so we can gain access to our wires. And I'm simply just going to use a screwdriver and a pair of pliers to grab. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. On the outside where our taillight was, this hole right here is where we just removed that plug. And now we're going to need to feed through our green and red wires, as well as the four pole wires, the green, yellow, white, and brown. And you're going to want to do this one at a time, get the connector through and a little bit of the wire so that you'll have enough room to get the following wires through. Once we have enough room, we're gonna pull it through. And then we can come back and put our other wires and connectors through. Now it is gonna be a snug fit, but it will work. Then we're gonna come to the other side and make sure everything's feeding properly and getting through. Now, there is one more wire that we're gonna to need to put through, and that's gonna be our black wire. I'm just gonna push that through to the other side. Now, the only remaining wire is gonna be our T connector and our ground. Now, this ground, I'm simply just gonna loosen this bolt right here and use it on the factory existing ground. I'm gonna use an eight millimeter socket to remove this bolt. bolt removed and put my ground wire on and then reinstall my bolt. I'm going to be attaching the supplied black wire. The kit does come with butt connectors but since this is more towards the outside of the vehicle where it's going to come in contact with some moisture maybe dirt I'm going to be replacing the supplied butt connector with a heat shrink bug connector, and you can pick those up on our website using part number DW0 
574-5-5. I needed to strip the end off this wire. Then I can take our buck connector and attach it to this end. Then I can take the other end of our black wire, insert it in the other end and crimp it down. You can use any heat source, apply the heat shrink on this butt connector, but we're going to be using a heat gun. You just want to double check and make sure you're not going to char or burn the wire or the connector itself. Now that we have our black charge wire connected, I'm going to go ahead and reconnect our four pole end and we're just going to match up the colored wires going to each other. Now with all of our wires connected, we're going to take all of our wires and we're going to go down right here, just on the outside of this weather stripping, right behind the bumper right here. So we're just going to start feeding all of our wires down. And once we get all of them started, we're going to need to go underneath the vehicle and pull them out. Now before we run our wire, I'm going to go ahead and connect our red and green T connector to our passenger side. That way we can feed our wires down through the same hole that we took that plug out and we can meet up with our wires from the other side. So now we're gonna come back to our driver's side under the vehicle and we're gonna take our red and green wire and we're gonna run it along the edge of the bumper here behind it and come back and connect to our other end of our connector. If you come to the back of the bumper, behind it here, there's a panel that's going to be like a support. If you go behind it, it is going to help prevent it rubbing on the exhaust or the hitch or anything else. It'll just give us that little bit of extra security before we zip tie anything down. The wires come out right above the bottom of the bumper. Now, luckily, our connectors have a male and a female end. So if we just match the female with the male end and the male with the female end, it'll be on the right connector. So we just reach up and connect our connectors. And for now, we're gonna leave this wire and we'll tie it up later. Our black wire, we're gonna need to run this up to the vehicle's battery. So give me a few minutes and I'm gonna run it and I'll show you how I get it done. Now everybody is gonna run it a little bit differently. So let me show you how I ran my wire. This is where it came out. I went up, tied into, zip tied it to a factory wire here, came across, tied into my factory ABS wire, came down, attached to my emergency brake cable, zip tying it along the way. And I jumped over to the outer edge of the frame there's a small loop right here, so I zip tied it there as well. And came back to the center section of the frame and zip tied it here. And finally, it stops right here. And we're gonna go up to the top underneath the hood so we can run this to the battery. Okay, now we're gonna have our wire coming up to the positive end of our battery here. So I got some airline tubing that I had laying around and I'm gonna be routing this down coming out so we can attach our wire and pull it back through. Now you can use anything if you don't have airline tube, basically anything that's gonna hold its shape so that when you push it down through, it can get all the way through to the bottom. So here's where our airline tube came out. I'm gonna take the end of our wire. I'm gonna insert it into my airline tube. Just use a little bit of tape to secure it. We can go ahead and pull our wire up. Then we can disconnect our airline tube. Next, we're gonna to need to attach our fuse holder to the end of our wire. So we're gonna take our wire and we're gonna strip the end of the wire off. And we can take another one of our heat shrink buck connectors. And crimp it on to the end of our black wire.
Now we can take our fuse holder. We're going to cut the wire so we have a nice end on each side. And we're going to strip one end of the wire. And we're going to attach the other end of our buck connector. Now on the other end of our fuse holder, we're gonna strip that into the wire as well. And we're gonna be putting on the ring terminal that is supplied with the kit. Now we're gonna take our ring terminal and we're gonna move the positive side post of our battery terminal and we're gonna attach it there. And I'm gonna be using a 10 millimeter socket to remove the nut. And just remove the nut, put our terminal on, and then reinstall the nut. We do have all this excess wire, so I'm just gonna tidy it up and zip tie it right here. That way, if any repairs are needed, we'll have that extra wire. Now, if we come back to our tail light here where our module box is, I'm gonna take the provided double-sided tape, take one side off, put it on the box. I'm gonna take the other side off and I'm gonna put this box as far down in the taillight channel as I can and then push it firmly into place so it'll hold against the body of the vehicle. Plug them in and we can reassemble our taillight. Now after we have our studs installed, we can come back and put our black retaining caps on, and we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Now all we have left to do is tidy up our wires and run our four pole to the center where the hitch is, and we can tie up any excess wires. I'm just gonna route our wire. I'm gonna take my dust cover. I can leave my four pole right here. And I'm just gonna tie up this wire back here with a couple zip ties. I'm just gonna coil up the excess wire, zip tie a bundle together. Then I can come back up to the bumper support channel and actually just tuck it up behind there. And we still have access and we can pull out any excess if we need it. Now with everything done, we can go ahead and put our fuse in. and we can test our lights. And if you don't have a tester, you can pick one up on our website using part number I26. Now, if I could have the running lights, please? Okay. Can I have the brakes, please? Brakes are working. Can I get a left turn signal? Right turn signal? Brakes and the turn signal? The other turn signal? All right, there we have it. We know all our lights are working. And then I'll finish up the look at the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness, part number 118585, on our 2012 Ford Transit Connect. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.